think uh, from the back. Uh, yeah, from the back. Nah, that's what's up. And, and C Web, yeah. this right here to match some, to match that, uh, to <laughs> I match that out for. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, to match that out for. <laughs> Welcome to Open Court Presented. Wait, wait. Are, are you a rookie? I am a rookie, yes. Oh, <laughs> what you got oh, 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 You'll see. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. What's up, Vegas? What's happening? Yeah. Welcome to Open Court Presented by Caesars Rewards. I'm the rookie. My name is Cabby Richards. Um, fellas, uh, the Larry O'Brien Trophy currently resides in the North. In the bosom of one of the most passionate fan bases in the association in Toronto. Now, before we get to your NBA Finals picks, we want to talk a little bit about the contenders. Shaq, who are the two, three, four teams that are legit contenders in 2020 to hoist the Larry O'Brien Trophy? I saw the Lakers play the other day, and I know it's preseason, but damn, they look good. Right? The Lakers look really good. I'm still going to put the Rockets up there. Okay. Giannis has turned down all the other superstars to work out with. I like his heart, I like his determination. I'm gonna throw Milwaukee in there. And I also gotta put Golden State in there. I know, I know C-Webb and uh, Reggie might, might disagree, but I'm not gonna disrespect Golden State like that, so sure. those are my top four right there. Okay, well we might as well get to you, Chris. I mean, the Golden State Warriors have advanced to the NBA Finals five straight years, yet, you do not have them making the playoffs this year. Why? A couple of reasons. One, because it's the NBA and it's the best players in the world, and we're disrespecting the NBA by acting like you can make it to the playoffs because of what you did last year. We know they have Steve Kerr and what he's done as a player and a coach. We, we know what Draymond Green heart is and what he did last year in the playoffs, one of the best playoff series I've seen by a guy that controlled the whole series. Steph, what you gonna say? But they do not have Andre Iguodala. They do not have Livingston. They do not have veteran presence like they had. If you hear Steve Kerr talk, he says he has to have two and a half hour practices with them because guys don't even know the terminology of their new plays. And this is the main point. The most disrespected player ever in the history of the NBA is the other Splash brother. Clay Thompson. Mr. Thompson. He was their best defender on other perimeter. He's the reason why they had spacing, because he could go around and be that. He's the cog of that offense. And without him, they may have problems scoring. Nah, that's their job to prove me wrong. But Klay Thompson, if he does not play this year, I do not see how they can make, even if he plays one month, I don't see how they could do it. I don't see it. That's just my true opinion. Reg, do you have any contenders for 2020? Well, I'm along the same lines as Shaq. Uh, the Lakers did look good. Yeah. But I will say, Arguably the best possibly starting five in the NBA will come from the Philadelphia 76ers. I think them getting Al Horford was right. a huge takeaway from Boston. Now you adding him to Ben Simmons, who, oh, by the way, did everyone see him knock down a three? Reggie Miller. Well, hold on. What? Reggie Miller. Bro. What? Bro. What a celebration. You know, it's crazy. When he shot it, he looked like he knew what he was doing. Yeah. It but, was crazy. But the <laughs> yeah. C-Web and I have been talking. That's only an exhibition game. I want to see it when the lights are up. I want to see it when the lights are up. He said that didn't count. It yeah. didn't count. It count. He's still over. Over 17. So I like Philly. And another team, the Los Angeles Clippers, to Ooh, me, are the best them. team. Uh, I know Laker I fans don't want to hear this. They're going to play uh, defense yeah, but, uh, every I night. Between them. Kawhi, yeah. Paul George, Patrick Beverly, who is a beast. Montrez Harold, two girl Lou, and you got you got punch coming off the bench with sweet Lou Williams and Doc Rivers, who knows how to win a championship. The Clippers will be in the thick of things when it's all said and done. Speaking of the Los Angeles Clippers, uh, what level of gangster were Kawhi Leonard's movements in the offseason? What did Denzel Washington play? The movie he played? Oh, American no, no, gangster. gangster, Frank Lucas. Frank, Frank Lucas. Lucas. Yeah, yeah, he was like that because because Kawhi doesn't talk a lot. Right, he's very quiet. You know, nobody knows what he's gonna do. I really think it's professional how he did it. So I'm gonna go with Frank Lucas, style of gangster. Yeah, gotcha. I like that, and I'm gonna go a little Godfather because the word is that uh, you know Doc Rivers gave him a list and said, choose from one. And you know, I could just see him, you know, sipping a glass of wine, going, yeah, I'll play with him. So I think his move definitely was uh, dope, and uh, being on the low, quiet, not making any waves, and just picking his team and going home. Right. Yeah. I, I'm going to say, Scarface, say hello to my little friend because... <laughs> Do that again. Say hello yeah. to my little friend. <laughs> because he was able to get Paul George to come along with him. And number two, 
he spurned what everyone thought he was going to go and join LeBron James and the Lakers, the bigger franchise. That's a huge splash for a team that's played second fiddle to the Lakers forever. Say hello to my little friend. And the little friend could also be the NBA Finals MVP trophy as well. That helps. He brings that to LA. Uh, fellas, from your experience, like we mentioned some MVP contenders, but we haven't seen them play together to develop chemistry. How many games or how many months should we give these teams with retooled lineups so that we, you know, we could properly evaluate, hey, this team is an NBA championship contender? Usually when you have two MVP caliber players, they like to score. But my favorite one-two punch this year is LeBron and AD. Right. LeBron likes to, you know, make his players better. And I watch them in that preseason game, and they look like they've been playing together for a while. You know, uh, Westbrook and Harden, I'm kind of worried about them because both of them like the ball, but they will figure it out because, you know, they grew up together, they're good friends. But my favorite one-two punch this year will be LeBron and AD. I believe that there's a good chance for AD to be MVP. Yeah. because he's younger and has energy. And LeBron is MVP all year and definitely during the playoffs. I would not be surprised if LeBron helped, allowed, worked with AD, got him MVP to be that battery and they back all year and then say, you keep doing it. Now watch me put on my, watch me put on this cape and do what I do during the playoffs. I really wouldn't be surprised, guys. I don't know about you. I, I really think for that Lakers dynamic to work and for them to win a championship, I think LeBron has to do that. You got young legs and young talent in Anthony Davis. This is LeBron's 17th year. Nothing to prove. You have nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. You are cons you are close, if not on Mount Rushmore. Close. Uh, some pe people put them on, but you're there. You're knocking on the door. You have nothing to prove. I think LeBron, on nights, can take a step back and be like, you know what? 15 assists tonight go get your 45-50, and we win by 15-20. And there's going to be other nights where LeBron has to be LeBron, but he's got to let these young dudes, Kyle Kuzma, Anthony Davis, let these young guys go to work. And that's the definition of a one-two punch, and I think he will do that. He kind of reminded me of you when you was playing with Jason Williams. When you and Jason hooked up, you used to run the floor. You run the floor because you knew he was going to get the ball. Yeah. So when he's out there with LeBron, he knows he's going to get the ball. He's catching lobs. He's playing with a lot of energy. He has uh, something to prove, and he's playing with a different type of energy. So, again, that's my favorite one-two punch, LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Nice. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into the MVP debate. Right after this, you're watching. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. No, no. No, no, no. Stand up. You're a rookie. You got to do something. Stand up. Stand up. Sing a song. What? Sing a song or else. Right now? No, right now. I was trying to throw no, a break, No, Chuck. we're not throwing to nothing. Sing a song. Let's go. <laughs> Sing a song. Right Let's go. Um, lean on me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. When we're not strong. Yeah, I like that, baby. And I'll be your friend. That's about it. I'll help you carry on. Sing it, Chris. <laughs> No, they know. Everybody knows. I don't know. Is everything about. okay now between you and Dame? I mean, what's the I deal? I do want to get to that. See, um, look. I do want to get to that. What, what's going Tell on? Tell listen. I've been knowing him for 20 years, and I knew he was going to do that. <laughs> right? I, I, I want to make listen. sure everything was okay. It's basketball season right now, so let's do what are we doing, MVP? We're, we want to do dive into some MVP okay, talk. let's do it. We are let's glad go. you shaved that George Jefferson off, though. Oh, it looked good. Yeah, <laughs> you did it look good yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you should grow a braid in the Oh, that was excellent. Fellas, um, Malcolm Gladwell popularized the catchy phrase, uh, which said that it took 10,000 hours of deliberate practice yeah. to master a craft. He was examining... Outliers. Yes, he was examining some, uh, a study about violinists. Shaq, you spent some time on the violin, yes? Or was it the cello? It was the tuba. Uh, listen, um, <laughs> you know, as, as players in the, in the summertime <laughs> master their crafts, who do you guys look at as legit MVP contenders based on what they did last year and based on how you think they will perform in 2019, 2020? I love James Harden. And he was talking a lot of smack this summer. He was saying, this guy was averaging this, I was averaging this. I scored 30 points, 36 games in a row. I should have got it. He's upset. He's definitely going to be a front runner, but I think he's, he's going to come out and, and show all the writers and all the players and all the analysts that they were wrong. He, he has something to prove. 
even though I think he should take a step back at times and let Westbrook go to work, I don't feel he's going to do that. I feel he's going to go out and say, you know what, y'all messed up. I'm the MVP, and I scored 30, 36 times in a row last year. I'm going to score 30, 70 times in a row this year. So <laughs> he's coming out gunning this year. Trust it, me. It, it has seemed like Harden has been one, two the last, what, four or five years? Four. Either he's yeah. wanted or he's been yeah. runner-up, right? Yeah. So he certainly, I think, will be in consideration again. I think it's going to be a run back. I think Giannis yes, yeah. is going to run it back yep. because – if you look at, and you know, I know we're going to get into best duos and one-two combination. Their second best player, Chris Middleton, is the perfect complement to what Giannis has to do because he's not really going to overshadow. When we think of Anthony Davis and LeBron James, I think they're going to take turns and they will take votes away from one another. Chris Middleton will never take votes away from Giannis Antetokounmpo. Paul George might take votes away from Kawhi Leonard. So when I look at MVP, He's 24, and from what I've been hearing, he's been working on that jump shot, which went to the north last year, <laughs> right? Did. Really, it went south. If he gets a jump shot, dangerous. run it back. I'm going with yeah. Giannis. Well, See what? I, I like both of those, and I, I definitely think Giannis has a chance, but I, I'm going to go with AD, considering that LeBron lets him do it, but then again, they could take votes. But I'm, I'm with Shaq. To me, uh, because people don't like Harden style of play, they don't give him enough credit for yeah. being a great player. Like I've never heard a great player get criticized for so much and that's what his coach wants him to do. And I believe that with his best friend on the team, if I'm Harden, I'm saying I'm an average 40 assists, break all records and you can shoot all you want and play two different styles. One where you handle the ball up top and I'm here and the other, if I get the fast break, everybody put their track shoes on. And I think Houston still they're still hurting from losing to Golden State those years, and I, you know, I, I definitely see Harden being up there, but you can't in front of Anthony Cooper. Let me ask you a question. Will Westbrook? I think will so. he? Will he really? This is the reason why I think so. Will Rich. he step back? Truthfully, truthfully, I don't know. You know. <laughs> but the reason <laughs> why, he? but the reason why I think they do is just the way I look at life is, if if you if you hate on me, and you hate my friend, mm -hmm. the worst thing you could do is put us together because we're going to sacrifice for each other before we would anyone else. And we both know, like, it, it could be worse after this. It, it hasn't been better before this. And we all we got, CMB, they hate us. And so I'm really, and, and think about this. Those two guys play every game. Yeah. They don't rest. That's why I don't think Kawhi can get it. They play every game. And so I, I, could, see, I could see Harden getting it again. What they should do is they should have a conversation for the game and say, hey, how many you want to average? Yeah. I want to average 26. I want to average 24. We have to take care of each other. Me and Kobe did that, believe it or not. Kobe knew that I had to average 28, 15, and then I knew he had to average his 27, 28, and it worked. Sometimes he took over the game, especially in the fourth quarter. A lot of times they threw me the ball. So if, I think if they have that conversation, say, hey, I want to average this, I want to accomplish this, then nobody really has to step back. You just have to take turns. Reg, as a lights-out shooter, as we're talking about James Harden earlier, what do you think about his one-legged fadeaway three? Have you seen footage of him experimenting I, with that? I have, and it's cute during <laughs> the summer and on social media and Instagram. That was your shot, right? Not, not that one-legged. You shot that before. No. Stop it. You not just kick both no. legs no. out when he shot That's the trick. That's a kick. First okay, offensive but, foul but, on okay, a jump but, shot. But hold on, hold on. If you got one leg on the ground and you kick one leg, that's a one-leg jumper. Am I correct? Am I correct, uh, Pants? Uh, Thank you. I think James yes. is launching off with, of just I'm, one. Right. I'm jumping with two legs and okay. kicking with one. Got it. All right. His is a one-legged three. It's cute. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know how many times he'll use it in game competition, but it, it, it's cute. It's cute. Now, fellas, um, according to a, a GM poll, this is the first time in eight years that LeBron James was not selected as the preseason favorite to win MVP. As one of you guys mentioned earlier, he's going to be 35 this year. It's his 17th year in the, in the NBA. Is this a fair appraisal, or do you think he should feel slighted? I think he should definitely feel slighted. But again, there's the, we have some young, impressive talent. Giannis isn't going anywhere. He's 24. Kawhi has been, uh, you know, talked about being the second or the third best player. AD's fresh. His legs are fresh. Uh, so we have a lot of talent. Uh, I think... You know, again, with the talent that LeBron has around him, a lot of people don't like to use this word. He should pace himself. AD, you want to go? Here you go. Kuz, you want to go? 
here you go. LeBron's going to, you know, average his points and then, you know, save his legs and then during the playoffs prove everybody wrong by bringing another championship to L.A. Guys like that, you know, they've been, they've been at the top for so long. At some point when you get older, people are going to start to forget about you. Yeah, I think you feel slighted because you just make yourself feel slighted because you're not in the conversation. He's one of the greatest, so he's going to be upset. But I think it's fair only because we're just basing it on father time. And if I'm a Lakers fan, I want him to win a championship, not an MVP. He could win an MVP easily. He could go to Charlotte and win an MVP to me. But as he's trying to win a championship, and I don't think he can do both at the same time because as Shaq says, he needs to rest in the pace himself because he's going to be called on to do some crazy things during the playoffs, as we know. And so it's almost like, what's your bigger priority? He could do either one, but I don't think MVP would be smart to take, it would take too much off his body. The MVP he wants is called the finals MVP, right? And that means they won a championship. Yeah. And I kind of hearken this to you, Shaq, because for so many years, you were the baddest man on the planet. So when you say, is he feeling slighted because he's not? Should he feel slighted? Should he feel? Because this was the baddest man for so many years during our era. So every year, Shaq's the best player. Shaq's the best player. Shaq's the best player. Players, MV, players right. MVP. I know you get upset when these other guys were winning regular season MVPs when you had monster years. I know you're shaking your head. But it was the finals MVP because that's when the baller's ball is in the finals in the playoffs. So three straight trips with the Lakers three straight finals MVP. To me, I think that's how LeBron should approach this. Yeah, they're probably talking junk about my game, but you know what? It's not the regular season MVP I'm gearing towards. It's the finals MVP and I the want. Best, and the best, I can tell you from these two, and, and, and I believe that for myself, we look for things to make us mad yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah, we do. So, yeah, we so yeah, he's mad and he should be, but really he shouldn't be, but he's gonna be mad and he should be because he's one of the best ever and you not mentioning his name anytime is disrespect to him. But the question is, is there anything that he can do to get ahead of MJ? And people talk about championships, you know, MVPs. There's no way we'll ever be able to Retire, the, go play baseball, come back and win three, three in a row. <laughs> come on, man. Three in a row. <laughs> three in a row right. twice. Right, right. Here, here, this with is no how, big this, man. With no, no big man. man. No, uh, hey, uh, this is how we'll find out who's better. Who was better at the box office in Space, Space Jam? Jam? Who was Space better? Jam. Yeah. Who That's how it's going to turn it. Whoever's movie's better. Space Jam okay. was. No, you know what? We can't too. even do that because it was no social media when Jordan was playing. So this is going to be way bigger. See, we can't. <laughs> different rules, man. Yeah, different rules. <laughs> different rules. Okay. <laughs> they all, all right, bad Speaking news. of eras, we're about to enter the Zion era. Let's dive into Rookies of the Year candidates right after this. This is Open Court, presented by Caesar Woodlands. You could appreciate the experience that Zion Williamson is navigating. What was it like to play under those lights as someone so young? Man, I was the youngest uh, playing in the NBA for two years in a row. And I was kind of crazy through two drafts. And I would honestly say it was, it was the greatest experience because you come to the league and guys are, are fans of yours and they want you to do well, just not against them. <laughs> and so I know that Zion seems to have a wonderful personality, seems to be a great kid. You know, I'm excited about that. I, I love him off the court. I think he has some stuff that all rookies have to grow on the court, but so what, that's every rookie. But he's gonna excite some fans. And I think he has a mean streak in him that you, you take for granted because you see his smile and nice mm. talk, all that same stuff Shaq and all those others used to do to try to set you off and make you think. <laughs> <laughs> and then just break a backboard on you. But um, I'm excited to see him. I know the people in New Orleans will. And, and I heard someone say this the other day, and it was a little over the top, but I kind of agree. I believe he saved New Orleans basketball. I believe that if he was not drafted number one, New Orleans may not be there in the next couple of years because you think about it. You know, they needed a lot. You lose Anthony Davis, you need someone that's charismatic, that the neighborhoods uh, love, that the fan base loves. And um, I'm just really happy that he's part of the NBA and he's doing his thing and I wish him success. As someone that his smile is also a million watts, Shaq, and he's got incredible athleticism, he's got a big body similarly to, you, to yourself. How do you... What was the experience for you when you came in the league and immediately you were doing commercials and you were the face of an athletic brand in Reebok and those sorts of things? The best, the best advice I got was from one of my favorite people in the world, Julius Irvin, Dr. J. Amazing. Because, you know, when you're the number one pick, uh, you go to a franchise, a lot is expected. 
Dr. J told me, have fun, play, and learn, and don't worry about the first year. So in the first year, you know, he's going to face a lot of adversity. You know, he's going to be going through a lot. But you just got to learn from that. Second and third year is when we start to judge people. Uh, if he just comes out and run the floor, get some dunks, average 15, 16, he's going to learn the game. He's going to become a better player. It's going to be a lot of talk because we all know if they make the playoffs, it's going to slow down. He doesn't really have a jump shot. So he still has to work on a few things. But my advice to him is just whatever you did in Duke in high school, do the same thing. Because I watched him when he played in, the, in Atlanta a couple of days ago. Looked pretty good. Running the floor, throwing it down hard. Atlanta fans was off their feet. If he does that for his first year, he's going to learn. He's going to have fun. And we and, uh, he will continue to grow. Reg, um, the New Orleans Pelicans executive vice president, David Griffin, told The, uh, the Athletic, uh, why do you, or they didn't put us on national team, national TV 30 times to take a beating. As someone who will likely call many of Zion's games, why do you think the NBA put the Pelicans on national TV 30 times this season? Zion, Mount Zion, right? <laughs> and I think Alvin Gentry and that coaching staff and the organization is doing a great thing. They're not putting a lot of expectations on his shoulders. And now you surround him with J.J. Redick, and Drew Holiday. So you have that veteran presence surrounding this young kid and saying, look, he's not the second coming. We're gonna take baby steps with him, but we want him to grow within our culture, right? It's not uh, NBA Finals or bust this year. Right. And, and Shaq is right. Go out and enjoy yourself. And under you gotta learn the NBA game first because it's a big difference from high school to college. And it is a huge leap from college. I don't care if you play as a freshman or a senior, a huge leap from college to the pros. Zion was always the biggest kid. Even in college, he was bigger than most guys. Now, he's one of the smaller guys now, right? Yeah. So he's got to get used to the physicality. And Alvin Gentry, who's an NBA coach, coacher, lifer, he understands that low expectations on this kid. I do want to put some expectations on him right now. Okay, what do you got, C-Web? I want him to get in the dunk contest yes. and make Shaq pull out that yes. video camera again that we did. Yes. It was a 2000 with Vince Carter. <laughs> yeah, That's the pressure. Yeah. LeBron got yeah. off of that. LeBron right. got off. Yeah. You take the pressure that LeBron now gave to you. Yeah, I want to see that. you in the dunk contest. Arguably one of the greatest players of our generation, LeBron, not one time was ever in the dunk contest. Right. Right. Kobe was in the dunk contest. Mike, Dr. J, Dominique Vince. Wilkins, Vince, yeah. all the great leaders. And then you hear that he doesn't want to be, uh, Zion is saying he doesn't want to be in the dunk contest. No, he said that? Yes, he says he doesn't want to be in the dunk contest because he doesn't want to be defined by just being a dunker. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Get a no, jump shot no, and dunk no, on no. people. Get a jump shot and yeah. dunk on Come people. Come on, man. Yeah. Come June, if we're looking at predicting the Rookie of the Year Award winner, do you take Zion Williamson or the field, Shaq? I'm going to take Zion Williamson. And how come? He has social media behind him. He has, he has the press behind him. Everybody's behind him. And the more highlights he gives us, the more hype he's going to get. So if he averages 15, 16 points and is playing well and nobody is, is, is playing as close as he is, he will definitely get it. I mean, because if you got that hype, everybody's looking at you. So if everybody's looking at you and you're doing well, it just, you know, creates more, you know, sentiment towards you. I will always take the field. Okay. Just, like, just hey. like every time Tiger Woods is in a major, everyone says Tiger Woods or the field. You always take the field. R.J. Barrett. Right. There's a, New York Knicks. Right. And you're talking about the hype machine, social media. Right. He has New York behind him. That media machine, which will help him. And there's but, one other name that no one really knows of from Miami. Tyler Hero. Tyler, oh, yeah. Tyler Hero from <laughs> Kentucky. Listen. I'm just telling you guys, watch out for nice. this kid. Listen, I watch him shoot. He ain't hit the rim yet. He hasn't Just hit the rim yet. No. Oh, man, it's all draws. Wet. 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 All draws. A couple other names to consider, uh, uh, Chris. Jay Morant, Darius Garland, Jarrett Culver, Rui Hachimura, Brandon Clark, DeAndre Hunt, Cam Reddish. Gabby, stop. Yeah, I, I Gabby, think, stop. I think Ja is the no only one. one. knows who those yeah, are. Yeah, no, yeah. He's gonna, stuttering. No, like, yeah. They're going to know. They're no, gonna no, know. no, no, I know. But uh, I, I like Ja's game and being that he'll have the AC ball in, in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> he'll have the ball in his hand uh, up there in Memphis, and, and they'll need him to play a lot. So I, I'm going to take, take the field, too, only because, too, Zion has a lot of good players around him, and they may not need him to do as much. 
Uh, it's, it's hard to imagine a post-LeBron world, but many of these fresh faces that we spoke about will carry the NBA through to the next decade. We're going to talk about dynamic duos after the break. You're watching oh, Open break. Court. Oh, great. Go ahead. Stand up. Sing oh, something else. Come on. Let's go. Sing something. Any day. You're watching Open Court, presented by Caesars oh, Rewards. We'll be back right there after you go. Open Court season preview, presented by Caesars Rewards. This is the big business, Shaquille O'Neal. This is the big mountain biker, Reggie Miller. And he is the big chill, Chris Webber. And now, fellas, you guys played in an era of dynamic duos, and it seems as though the NBA is returning to that era. There are a number of new dynamic duos in the, in the league, and I'll list some, and I want to I get your thoughts on who intrigues you the most. Before we get started, I want to have a, a fashion alert. My man with the LeBron jersey, come up here, please. Yeah. I want to Speaking show. of new duo, duos, he has yes. a new running mate in L.A. Stand right here. Come Stand on in, my middle. G. Come on in. Stand up here. Come on in, my G. I want to show people how not to wear a jersey. You're not supposed, <laughs> you're not supposed to tuck the jersey <laughs> in your shirt. Uh, uh, Come on, see? man. Look, my man, you got to let it out, bro. Come here. <laughs> let it out, bro. Yeah, you got to let the jersey. There you go. There you go. Uh, Thank you. There you go. <laughs> All right, thank you. Love cool. you, buddy. Hey. America, do hey. not, hey. America, hey. do not tuck your jerseys in your uh, jeans. Hey, thank I you, thought you was about to get some love. Love you, brother. Thank uh, you. Okay, Appreciate but there, yes. my man, there are some parting words for you. Shaq him, says man. you can't tuck your jersey yeah, in anymore. Don't tuck. Yeah, there, right there. Bam. There you go. Looks there good. Go. Looks good. All right, thank you, brother. Love okay. You. So, All right, thank you, brother. Yeah, that's, okay, that's so, what's up, man. That, hey, that's been bothering me the whole show. I'm like, <laughs> he's like, pull it he's out. fresh now. Nah, he's fresh now. Nah. <laughs> All right, so uh, new entry, new duos. Who intrigues you the most? Paul George and Kawhi, LeBron and Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Steph Curry, D'Angelo Russell. I gotta go, LeBron and AD. Uh, we we spoke about this earlier. I watched them play. They look real fluid. LeBron is a little bit of Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson. He's right. a true definition of a great player. John Wooden said the true definition of a great player is one that makes the other players better. LeBron's been doing that his whole career, and he threw that man about four or five easy lobs, and AD went up to get him. He's playing with, with new energy. So that's my favorite because I miss that. I miss, I miss the, the, the small, big combination. Got you. Uh, Reg? I think the most hype duo out of what you listed is probably... Russell Westbrook and James Harden, right? Yeah. I think if it works, I mean, you've got two former MVPs on the same team, childhood friends, grew up with one another. Now they get a chance to play together. If it works, I think it could be fantastic, but it could be a crash and burn scenario. So to me, I, I will have to go with Shaq. I'm probably more interested in seeing AD and LeBron just because of the different dynamics both of them can bring to the floor. I agree with both of you. Shaq just said something I never really thought about with these two, but LeBron is going to make AD better. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just sad. And AD is going to make LeBron better. So I, I, I'm going to love seeing them big to little, them on the pick and roll and doing other things. But I'm really intrigued as well up there in Houston. I think that they have a special chance to redefine what everyone thinks of them and, and more importantly to shut, you know, the haters, shut the media, shut anyone up that, you know, doesn't give them uh, a, a second chance. But as Reggie said, to me, I, I love it and I think it could be great. But what, what did you say? It could, it could crash and burn. <laughs> it could crash and burn. <laughs> okay, so fellas, as you guys broadcast a lot of West Coast games, speaking of Los Angeles, how do you think Kawhi Leonard and Paul George will play together? Well, I, I'm like Shaq. Like, I love Kawhi. I love the fact he doesn't talk, he doesn't fall for it. I mean, I love that in Tim Duncan, who I competed against. So I love the same thing in Kawhi. And being at home, um, Reggie and his family and friends from L.A. booing him at Dodgers games, stuff like that, because <laughs> it's a Lakers town. You, you know, it's a really a Lakers town. And so I, I really want to see if he can change the dynamic and try to make it a, a Clippers town. I really want to see... Um, what his purpose never is gonna never happen. gonna happen. Never gonna but I'm not happen. from Stop LA, it. so I want to see what happens with it. But Stop I'm it. really interested in seeing uh, Kawhi. Uh, Did you uh, just do say Clippers Town? I said I want to see if he wins and he turns into a Clippers Town. I don't believe those two words came out your mouth. Clippers Town. <laughs> I mean, Clippers Town. Oh, hell no, Craig. <laughs> As an LA dude, how do you think uh, you know this will work between Paul and Kawhi? I think it's gonna work great. This is they to me. 
very poor. Hear me out. Very, very poor man's Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. And the reason why I say this is you've got Kawhi Leonard, MJ, and you've got Scottie Pippen as Paul George. Paul George, God bless him, always needed a true Batman, right? And he has that now with Kawhi Leonard, as we saw in the finals, right? What Kawhi did. So I think it can work great because they know their roles. They know who's the alpha and who's the omega. If Kawhi and Paul George win two championships in the next three years, that means, freaking on, do. that means, that means, they, freaking listen do. to me, but listen it's to still going to be a Lakers time. Right, what are you talking no, I'm about? I'm not asking you that. But that means they would have had to have gone through LeBron and AD, right? Right. So does that change your perception of the work no, they're doing? It doesn't. No. Why not? We're just saying that you it's and I are in the same town. agreement of dynamic Look, duels. Listen, you don't. asking a man with championships I for the know. Lakers. No, no, don't no, even no. ask him, man. No. <laughs> don't it's even pride. Yeah, it's, it's not, not, it's it's not, not about He's going me. to eat with that no. magic after this show. Listen, forget me. How can y'all disrespect Jerry West? No, 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 we're Michael not doing Cooper. that. We're they not doing that. Town. We're not doing that. They built that town. Hold Don't on. change the town. We're not disrespecting. Uh, no. They built that town. It's a Lakers town. I Stop it. I get that, but you don't respect I do respect it. Quite I, going I, through the I, want, AD? I want them to win, but it will never be a Clippers town. I'm sorry. I'm not saying it's a saying. Clippers town, but the perception, before the perception of the Clippers was they were cursed. The Clippers, curse. right? There was no curse. We just no, used to bust their ass. That was the whole Don't have me call Keith Close around. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about Benjamin. Call Benoit Benjamin. Yeah, yeah, Benjamin. 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 Benjamin.
We have a few questions uh, from the audience. Okay, we have Mike in the sports book. What do you got for What's us? What's up, Mike? Ray J? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got one wish. I got one wish. Oh, right. one wish. Shaq, Reggie, what's up? C Web is for you, my man. I know for a fact that when y'all lost to us, the Lakers, I'm a Laker fan. <laughs> to us, I like that. So yeah, now yeah, you yeah, in shape. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Even though he just called you, he just wants he you did, to he see. He called me out with my Rachel. curls. No, they natural. No, they natural. No, they no, natural. No, they no. natural. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you feel that y'all needed one more piece just to get over the top of my Lakers? I feel that we could have won and we should have won, and we didn't, and the better team beat us, and it took. Hall of Famers, you know? It took Shaq, one of the most dominant players ever. Kobe. And that no call. Uh, well, eight, game no six, call. definitely, but we still uh, should have won game seven. Y'all should have won. You're right. So you to answer won, your but... question, yeah, we should have won. <laughs> but we played against Phil, Kobe, Shaq, the most dominant, and, and Big Shot Rob, and that's tough to do. You have a question, sir? Yes, this question is for Reggie Miller. LeVar Ball, what's up, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Big baller, bro. <laughs> hey. hey, Reggie, we were shouting out to you, uh, my family over there. He wanted to know, too, the year that y'all beat New York. Multiple years. Say it True. again? He's Multiple. correct. Multiple. But, well, we're, did Spike Lee have anything to do with it when he did that to you? Was that the reason y'all won? He had everything to do with it. <laughs> Ooh. He had everything. Ooh. Yeah, I, look, I don't mind fans jeering and... Get him, Reg! That's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with that. That's part of the game. But if you're going to sit in the front row and I can hear you, you're going to be part of the game then. Just sit there and clap, cheer, whatever. But when you're calling my name out and you're calling out my sister's name and my family's name, it's on. It's on. Get him, right? Rich. <laughs> Get him, Rich. Get him, Rich. Your question for us, young lady. Hi, it's for all three of you. I wanted to see if you felt that Isaiah should have been left off of the first dream team. Oh, great question. Oh, oh, are you a Thomas reporter? The first question. Are you a reporter? Well, I'll make it easy. I grew up a Pistons fan, and I think Zeke is, to this day, the best small guard that ever played the game. Or I won't say ever, but one of two of the best small guards that ever played the game. You picked the other one. And I definitely thought uh, he should have been on the, on the dream team. Well, let me just say this. There was two big omissions on that. Isaiah should have been on that team. And the guy to my right should have been on that team instead of Christian Leitner. Look, I love Duke, and I love what Leitner did at Duke. But if you're talking about the dominance force at that time on that team, this dude should have been on Dream Team oh, One. Okay. I, but we made up for it in Atlanta, oh, yeah, didn't yeah. we, big fella? <laughs> Dream team we two, made up for it for Dream Team. <laughs> well, two, three, well two you three. say two because that was two was in Toronto was for in Toronto, the World right, Championship. Right. Three was in the Atlanta. The Atlanta. I think he should have been on that team. Yeah. You know, it's a whole lot of misconceptions. Well, then who do you take off? You Chris, take, uh, Christian Leighton, I gotta go. Well, they were gonna have one college guy. We, we don't need a college guy. I'm with yeah, you. Co I'm, guy with you. I'm with you. I'm I mean, with you. I'm with you. I mean, because the college guys didn't play that much anyway. So if I was gonna be on a team, forget practice. I want to be in the games against you know some of the world's greatest. It's a lot of history and conspiracy talk about what happened. We'll never know <laughs> what happened, but I think he definitely should have been on that team. Biggest slight. Well, listen, uh, Sportsbook, I hope you guys are enjoying the delicious treats, courtesy yeah. of Big Thank Chicken you. and Big Chicken. Shaquille O'Neal. Um, we're going to have a few bites. You guys hang tight. You guys are watching Open Court Season Preview presented by Caesars Rewards. Oh, we're going to break. We're going to break.